What is your strongest quality? <sighs> I love myself. I believe in myself. I believe in myself. What I want, I will get. What I want, I will do. Okay? That's something that you cannot take away from me. So, I think that's the strongest quality I have. I don't give up easily. Hi lovely viewers, it's me again, your one and only Mtati Mpundu. Welcome to my YouTube channel. If this is your first time on my channel, kindly subscribe to my YouTube channel by hitting the red subscribe button down below and turn the bell icon to join the notification squad. Don't forget to like, share and leave a comment. Tell me what you think about this video in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. All right, welcome to episode five of the Growth Podcast. Um, for the last, what, four or five weeks now, um, we've been having conversations with different kinds of people. And today, obviously, is no exception. I have a very interesting guest um, today who's going to really just entertain us and teach us a number of things. I look forward to learning from her um, and uh, having a conversation that I feel will kind of like, you know, open her up so that we can get to know her better in terms of what she's doing and also what others can learn from her. So please don't forget to like the video, subscribe and then share and tag a friend if you can. So yeah, my guest today um, needs no introduction. Muizu Kanji, welcome to the conversation. Thank you so much, Sui. I'm really happy to be here. Yeah, we're actually happy to have you. Mm -hmm. We're very happy I've to have you. I've been sat like this in a long time, especially where the cameras, so I'm a little bit... But I'm no, good. No, no, don't worry. You'll be very safe. Yeah. You, you, you'll be okay. You'll be okay. Uh, yeah. So first of all, Muizu uh, Kanji means what? Memory. Memory. Yes. So do you prefer Muizu Kanji or Muizu? A reminder of something. Muizu Kanji. Muizu or also, Kanji. Muizu or Kanji. Yes. Interesting. Mm -hmm. My name is Sui Lanji. It means faith. Uh, I like Sui, but I never have Lanji. Like Lange. the Lanji just never, you know, happens for me. And you're from Isoka as well, because yeah. I'm, I'm from Isoka. From Isoka. What village is on, 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 on your NRC? Uh, <laughs> Kaombwe. Kaombwe. Kaombwe village, yes. Ah, okay. Mine is, mine is Lupita. No, mine is Kaombwe. And your chief is who? Uh, chief Kafwimbi. You know, dreams changed along the way. Uh, in between growing up and being a grown up, I got pregnant when I was not so grown up. So I got pregnant when I was a teen. And um, I was in grade 12 then. So because I, I got pregnant when I was that young, no, not really young, but then, you know, I, I knew uh, very few things about life. There was um, not much that I knew about life. So I got pregnant. Fast forward, I felt my grade 12 with flying colors. That's why I don't find the GCE jokes funny, by the way. Okay. Because I've been through that road. I felt I got pregnant and um, I was uh, still a teen then. I got married. But tough decisions. Family was not really for the idea. But yeah, I got, I got married. I went off. You know this teenage love affair. You know, you feel like this guy is the one. Yeah, love we, you know. Everything is just revolving around that person and then you are seeing to my children, you know, that future where now you don't want to think about uh, what I want to become, how I'm going to be, what I want to be. But the only thing that you're seeing is, um, you know, love, someone telling you they love you and you're comfortable with that and you put your life on hold. So fast forward, that was me and I entered uh, into a marriage when I was quite young. I had my daughter uh, later on. Um, I moved from Lusaka, I went to Mukushi. That's why I stayed as a married woman. I don't know if I was a married woman or a married girl, <laughs> but then I went, I went there. And um, I think at that point, I really didn't even have dreams of my own. Because now I was just seeing myself, you know, I just wake up, you cook, you know, you are this person's wife, you are comfortable in that space, this person is providing, you are okay, and everything is just going on well. So uh, I put my dreams on hold. Remember that Abba Manjani, she could, GCE was calling, but I had not made the decision to, you know, receipt. 
But that was my life as a married person. I went, I was in the marriage. Fast forward, I had another child when I was uh, in Mkushi. That was 2013 when my son was born. This time it was a baby boy. My first child was a girl, a very beautiful, tall girl who looks almost like me now. So um, having been in those, uh, you know, situations, you experience what marriage is like, you know, being a child, you're not so mature, but then you're married, I understood a lot of things and I got a lot of lessons. That marriage felt, but before that marriage uh, felt, I went and um, I sat for GCE. So, you know, one was pushing out, you know, because you're experiencing life, you're seeing what's happening, you're seeing what, how society can be if you don't have uh, a paper, you know, so I started, that process started anyway. Why? Because now I was talking to people, I was seeing what was happening in other people's lives and I, I just convinced myself to say, I think I really need to take this route. And I'm glad that I got support from family, I got support from the friends that I had then. I went back, Kunkala grade, um, grade 12, I cleared, lucky enough. So I cleared, I pushed, I went into college, I was in, uh, in Wansha. So I went into college, unfortunately the marriage failed for some reasons that I really don't like to discuss because that part of my life is not in the public, but the marriage failed. So from that experience for me, I picked up a lot of lessons, a lot of lessons that even now I can sit and share with someone, I can tell someone what it is like to be in a marriage and not be able to stand up for yourself. I can tell someone what it is like to be in a marriage and you are depending on someone to provide for everything that you need. So now my story is about, you know, encouraging another woman, encouraging another girl that regardless of the situations that you've been through, because I've seen people that have gotten pregnant when they are maybe in college, people have gotten pregnant when they are in grade nine. People who got pregnant maybe when they were in grade 12 and they just give up, they feel, okay, I think at this point I can't do anything. Or maybe people that just get so comfortable and say, okay, for me, I think I can get into a marriage and everything just, you know, goes like that. I'm not saying marriage is a bad thing. Marriage is a beautiful thing. Even when we're growing up, we're like, okay, I want to get married at 25. I want to have my own house at 26. I want to, you know, have so many kids at 27. You know, we, we all have those dreams. Marriage is a beautiful thing, but in as much as you're going to go into that marriage, you have to work on yourself, you have to build yourself, and you have to be in a position where you're able to stand up for yourself. My childhood is not very much um, interesting, but I got a lot of lessons from there. Interesting, you sound very wise, eh? How would you expect? Yeah, Namwanga wisdom. Yes. Namwanga I'm wisdom. Namwanga. Yeah, and your so, last yeah. name is Nakamba, by the way, right? Yes, I'm Nakamba. Nakamba. Mm -hmm. Your mm -hmm. brother's a Siame. Yes. All right. Uh, last time I was telling you that I actually want to see if I can make my if 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 God gives me a girl, I want to make her a Siame. You know? No, don't. I kind of like. It's better if they use both. Maybe they use yeah. Nakamba Siame or Siame Nakamba. Okay, yeah, that's, that's yeah. actually a good idea. That's that actually a good idea. Better. Okay, so now you're done with your GCE. You go to college. What did you do at college? I have a, a degree in business studies with education. Yeah. Something that has, um, I haven't really, um, because I can teach, I'm a teacher, but I haven't really gone that route. So I can't say it's a bad thing that I got that paper because that paper has, has really helped me understand a lot of things in society. So it's a, it's a bachelor of business studies with education. Yep. Okay. And 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 now obviously you you've gone through all of that um childhood is obviously now behind us. You're mm -hmm. you're done with your education. Um how is it like or how has it been like for you raising your children because you mentioned that first one was a girl, then the boy. How has it been raising children? And right now I'm saying that because we are living in an era where social media can literally damage a child. Like a, a child can literally be a good boy, what and what, but then mm -hmm. social media, friends at school, whatever the friends are exposed to, your children are exposed to that. How has it been like you for you raising children as a single parent? Okay, so I have um, standards for myself. I have standards for my kids. And uh, in as much as the world is going to be harsh, you know, children can learn things out there. But when they come home, 
I have got specific rules. I've got specific ways on how a child is supposed to behave in my house, what they're supposed to do, what they are not supposed to do. And I strongly feel that I'm doing the right thing because my children are well behaved. I flock sometimes. <laughs> if I have to. <laughs> is it, is it, is if it, is I have it, to, I flock. Is there, is there anything that, like from memory, when you just look back, mm -hmm. that like a proud moment, that you, something you, your kid did that made you proud when you look back? A lot of things. Like what's the one thing that really stands out? Okay, now I've got four kids. And uh, these four kids are doing different things. And um, I think one striking moment was um, when the matron for... Uh, the school where my son is sent me this video and um, my son was in church he's an adventist now even today I just picked him from school I was telling me oh, okay I'm an adventurer this is what I do ABCD so they sent me a clip and he was in church he was uh, you know he was um, doing his presentations and I was not there but when I watched I was really proud he is so good when it comes to singing okay so the advent hymns is very very good that's um that's my son he does a lot of things that make me proud and um i remember the last time i had a conversation with my daughter my first daughter when uh, my dad died you know we sat i think a few days a few days after we buried she started explaining to me what happens when someone dies and I was like, okay, where did she get all that from? So I was comforted by this not so old child, but a little girl who I, who I feel understands death, understands life much more than I do. So there are a lot of things that my kids do that I look at them and I'm just so proud as a mother. I'm just so proud. I can't take the credit for everything that my kids are today because um, I have got a family that is also helping me raise the kids. You know, they say it takes the whole village to yeah. raise the kids. Yeah. So a lot that my kids are doing that I'm just looking and saying, okay, this is God. This is good. This is family. This is me. But at the end of the day, I just look at them and I'm so proud. Okay. Are you yeah. able to tell at the ages mm. what they want to become like in the future? I don't want to impose on what they no, but should. Based on their on, yes, what I, they should or should not be. But w at one time we had this conversation. Um, my son said he wanted to be a soldier, and my daughter said, "Ah, they're going to shoot you and you die." <laughs> <laughs> so from that time, like he just changed his mind. Now I hear he wants to be an engineer because my young brother is now an engineer. So for me, I feel um, what you expose your child to is what they're going to absorb and that's what they're going you know if you're going to expose them to people that are doing nothing people that ha don't have dreams for themselves it's very difficult for, ch for a child to look and be motivated but i think they are around people that are shaping them very well and uh, i'm hearing some want to be engineers some want to be doctors but then my daughter was asking me can i buy a car if i'm a doctor so i said yes you can ah okay can i buy a house if i'm a doctor and I said, yes you can so they want to be my my daughter wants to be a nurse i have got four kids by the way the team is big now they are four so my eldest daughter is 18 and uh, she wants to be a nurse for her she just wants to be a nurse my other daughter wants to be a doctor the other one wants to be an engineer the smallest one I just see her dancing around. We have not really had a conversation <laughs> on what she wants to be. Yeah, but an idea, when least. she just hears, uh, you know, music, she'll, she'll be there, she'll be dancing. But yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. And then, okay, now, now then the Muzokanji that we know now, like, blossomed. Like, mm -hmm. then you came on the scene. Um, how did you ever imagine that you'd be famous? No. This famous? No. But. Um, Growing up, I was always a troublemaker, so a lot of people knew me for misbehaving. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I would beat up people. I would uh, go to the road. Uh, I would go to the road. I used to play with boys. So sometimes we'd beat up people. Reports would come. So I was famous for such things. Even in school, I was uh, actively involved in politics. So I was known for, uh, for that. And um, when I was in school, uh, I got a job, by the way. My first job was when I was in college. 
So a lot of people knew me from that. But this famous, I didn't imagine that I was going to be like this because sometimes I get scared. I have been to Chadiza, I have been to Lundazi, and you just find people that will say, Ah, oh, Muizu! You know, been to Livingstone, I've been to Kasumbalesa, I've been to Kitwe, different parts of the country. And you just find people that are going to, oh, okay, that's Muizu. So sometimes it scares me because it's something I didn't plan. But here we are. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and when did it hit you? Like, okay, wait, I'm actually famous. Ah, hitting? Uh, 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 uh. There was no I moment. don't even, there was no moment where it hit me because the moment that uh, um, maybe that was supposed to hit was when I was being bullied. So for me, it was like when you just go online, you find people are talking, oh, this ugly girl. No, she's the most ugly. They'll get your pictures, they'll be talking. So I think that was a point. The negative energy was everywhere. My face was everywhere. People, at some point, I was even crowned the, the ugliest girl, you know? This, this, pictures when people post pictures and then they, they 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 vote and then they say oh okay the ugliest girl is this one so for me that at that, at that point i thought okay people were talking about me everyone was mentioning mizukanji almost everyone had an opinion on what was happening so i think that was the point it hit to say okay i think yeah you don't look ugly to me um so how did you deal with that because i can imagine the the cyber bullying all of that how did you deal with that Okay, I'm not going to sit here and um, just say it was something easy. I'll be lying. It was a very difficult uh, uh, phase in my life. Um, I needed family. I needed close friends just to be with me, you know. And um, I'm glad that we overcame. Uh, it was at that point that I even became suicidal, you know. I was almost giving up, not because I wanted to, but because of the energy that I was getting, you know, the bullying that was going on, and um, a number of people were just trying to make it worse. Because it was a topic every day, every day. When you just log into Facebook, you just find this is happening, people are talking. When you just move, you know, even when you're not on Facebook, you just find people, oh, dear Ucha, you know? Everyone is pointing fingers. It was not easy, but I'm glad that we overcame. And I know there are a number of people that are going through different situations that they feel, okay, this is just the end of me. This is not making sense, you know? You feel like giving up? The only thing that you need to do is find the right company, find the right people, associate yourself with the right people. And that is, um, it's really, really going to help you overcome. The thing I admired about you um, is with all of this, like you said, you're coming from a point where you're suicidal and then now you've rebuilt yourself and like you've come out of all of that, you've dealt with all of that and now you're here because obviously looking at you now, you don't look like you're suicidal, you look like where you still I have a future, life, you yeah? know, yeah, you look <laughs> like you still have, you know, a life ahead of you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, 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 and you dealt with that and now you're here. Talk me through your hustle, okay? Like, because the first, I think my first encounter with you on social media was the t-shirts. Mm -hmm, you know, mm -hmm. the hustle, the yeah. hustle t-shirts and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Talk me through that. What, what exactly do you do? Um, you work, you run businesses. Last time you were telling me you got, what, five cars or something. You know, very inspiration. Talk me through that. Okay, so, you know, whatever is going to come to you, whatever is happening, you have to survive. You know, you have to as long as you're breathing you have to eat if you have to eat you have to buy if you have to buy you must have money and how are you going to have that money find ways of you know hustling find ways of you <laughs> how am i where is my next meal going to come from so um for me the point when i realized that okay i attracted um this much uh, following I attracted um, you know a number of people were interested in seeing what I was to be or what was happening but uh, I took advantage of that and just used that uh, to 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 grow my business so we had we had the hustle we still have the hustle brand and um, I sold 
and I survived from the hustle at that point because when everything else was happening, I was so affected that I I felt to perform even at work and I was fired. I was fired a few a few days um, after everything started going on. So I was so affected, I couldn't reach my targets, you know, in a, in a work environment where you're supposed to hit targets, where you're supposed to make sales, where you're supposed to, and I was not able to do that because I was not in my right mind. And that's something that people also need to understand that mental health can actually affect, not just, it can affect everything around you. And if not handled properly, it can even be the end of you. So I was so affected to a point where I lost my job. I didn't know how I was going to survive. I had kids that I had to provide for. You know, I had a lot that was happening. I had rentals, I had a lot that was happening and I lost my job. So the only plan B that I had then, do or die, okay? If you don't sell, you don't survive. If you don't, if you don't sell, and I hate handouts. If you don't sell, I was not going to stand for myself. So I used the I used that for me uh, to grow my business. I used it, you know, people are going to be looking at you. As they are looking at you, they are able to buy, they are able to see what you're selling, they are able to see what you are offering, and that's how the journey started. It was there then, it was there before that happened, but when the numbers came and everything happened, for me it was just I, 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 I outgrew the negative energy because now I knew that, okay, people are talking, but then we're, you know, we're making this money. It wasn't much, but we were surviving. So we did much. The, um, the, biggest, uh, the biggest deal that I had before now, when I was doing my t-shirts, was when I uh, went and supplied t-shirts in Petauke. So like I became the main supplier for the t-shirts who were doing the printing for the campaign, you know. We provided t-shirts to quite a number of people that side and for me that was a plus. It really pushed me up, it really changed a lot of things in my life and I'm also grateful to Honorable J Banda because when he came in a lot changed. Yeah, so we managed to push, we managed to push and uh, we started growing. So now there was this business we are doing, we are printing, we are also growing our own brands, we are doing boot sales, you know, we are doing deliveries in these markets, we are going to, to, to different markets and just selling. And for me that became my life. I was not ashamed. If I wanted to, I had an option. I was just going to say, okay, life has become difficult. I can go back to my father's house and just sit, you know, relax, flex and do nothing and wait for when I was going to, you know, get another chance to work somewhere else. But I didn't want that for myself. So then we started growing. We started growing um, fast forward. I don't know which part I'm supposed to focus most on the brand. Now there's, you know, there's Muizukanji. Um, I, I went on and registered a company that's uh, into marketing. So for some of the clients that we, we usually promote products, they are not just people that call and then say, okay, post this for me. So we've got contracts, we've got people that, and we've got rates. Yeah. So away from that, I'm also full-time employment at Jelum Zambia. And um, I also have my own vehicles on the road. I don't want to mention which ones because I don't want to promote, you know, she said this, maybe yeah. there's another <laughs> company that wants to engage me. So yeah, there are a number of vehicles on the road. And uh, for me, it has really been, it has really been good business. Transport has really been good business for me because I know even if I'm just sleeping at home, there's some cashing that is going to come and it's a plus for me. Away from that, um, also now into cakes. So it's, it's just starting. Yeah, I saw but, the, the school. Yeah, it's just, I, I went into the school, I, I did my, my short course, and now we registered the company, and now we we're doing cakes. So we just employed someone, and uh, very soon the marketing and everything is going to be on, on. We also have a saloon. Not oh, the Avocado Kids. Not we, I should say the kids. <laughs> <laughs> so for me, it has just been about looking at opportunities. You know, if I'm going to, uh, in, you know, entrepreneurship is about offering solutions. Yeah. 
So for me, if I if I scan, if I do my SWOT analysis, I see okay, this I think I can do. This I think um, w- w- with this opportunity that is presenting itself, I think I can kick in and do A, B, C, D. So for me, it's just been about scanning the market. Even if I see your business, you are not taking care of it. I can grab it from you and just work on it. Mizukanja as a brand, um, I have a standard rate that gets me. I think in a month. Um, I don't want to exaggerate and I don't want to also um, give figures that are not but if I'm going to influence a brand I don't get less than 10,000 kwacha so if you see me influencing brands figures are different but at least I don't go less than 50 when everything comes in this pays this pays this pays so it has really been um, about using opportunities it has really been about um you know being ready to take on challenges being ready to just look at a business opportunity and then just grab it yeah. and 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 you have a lot of followers like I, you've got a lot of followers on your social media what do you think people like about you what do you think draws them to you because look if they didn't like you they wouldn't follow you or they would have followed you and you had your issues and then they leave you. But you've got followers. They are seen in the engagement and they're always there. What is it about Mizukanji that you feel draws people to you? People have been part of my story. We have created that family. We've created that bond. There, sometimes when I sit, I, I look at um, a few comments from people. There are people that have seen from you know 2018 2019 2020 they've been around so people can easily relate to my story people can easily you know they look at me then they, they know where we are coming from they know what has been happening they know how we have struggled and they have been around to see uh what we went through to be where we are so i i really appreciate people that have really really in some they are paying attention because they they promised themselves that okay it's going to fail at some point and then you yeah. know because i had situations where um sometimes you try to promote something that you're doing you try to talk about a business and people will be like ah no she's just doing this for show off you know she wants to be seen she wants to be noticed she wants to be that so their followers are in a lot of categories but what I appreciate most is that I am going to be around for the longest time and my story is going to be a story that someone can just, you know, they look at me, they see where I'm, I'm coming from. I've actually gained. <laughs> I've finished August when the wind comes. <laughs> you know? So people know where we're coming from. People know how much we struggled. People know how it was like when I just hit rock bottom. Because my story has been in public. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people, they just, you know, some believe in God now, believe that God can do wonders. People now believe that, oh, God can actually do A, B, C, D if you are patient. God can change someone's situation. So some people use me as, as a testimony. Some people use me as a reference point. Some people just look at me and say, ah, no, I'm not posting it. So there are a lot of people. But yeah. then the, the only thing that we need to do is know ourselves know where we're going you know we have a game plan and you know life is like a race when you are running that would have no conquer more you know have no tamanga with you they can tamanga with you if they are too tired to tamanga with you they remain behind and just sit and watch but for me my followers we share the story they understand where we're coming from and i think they have an idea where we're going good yeah what is your strongest quality <sighs> i love myself i believe in myself I believe in myself. What I want, I will get. What I want, I will do. Okay? That's something that you cannot take away from me. So, I think that's the strongest quality I have. I don't give up easily. I keep pushing. I feel I get up, I keep pushing. And and looking at your businesses um, mm-hmm. and other parts of your life, when you look back, okay, like the businesses you've done and whatnot, what do you think you'd have, done, you'd have done differently? Like what mistakes did you make in the past that you would not want to repeat going in the future? Okay. Um, 
allowing a business be the only thing your business is going to pay rent your business is going to the same business is going to pay rent the same business is going to buy your fuel the same business is going to buy your swag that's something that you know it really drained me at some point that's why you hear no business in agua you know someone tried to do this but then they failed because you tried to make uh you know your business do everything for you but for me the lessons i got from that is it's very difficult for you to have you know one source of income and then just entirely depend on that diversify look at opportunities look at something else in case this fails what can you do yeah so i because i got my lessons from there now i'm able to i'm able to you know push myself do better look at opportunities and just grab different opportunities i'll never allow one business uh be the only source of income for me okay and who do you like who do you look up to my mother okay she's a very strong woman you know she's she's got a fighting spirit she's a person who never uh, gave up on us never gave up on what she was doing she's a go getter Is she also an entrepreneur? She yeah, too much. She's a nurse, but then she went about skills development. Eh? She went. She, now she's she 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 designs clothes during her free time when she's not working. You know, she's designing clothes, and that's powerful for me. Interesting. She's a woman who is not only depending on her job. And and where you are the businesses you've gone through everything that has happened to you what would be the top five i'm saying top five i'll be counting the top five advice you'd give to women either single women or married women or business women what would be the five things you would want them to reflect on and this is muizu kanji advising women number one <laughs> There's a lot that I can say and I just don't know how to group them. When you say generally women, it becomes a bit tricky, but I'll try anyway. One, you have to believe in yourself. Okay? Uh keep the right company. Sometimes you might believe in yourself, you might want to do A B C D for yourself, but if you are not keeping the right company, it's very difficult for you to be who you want to be. As you are believing in yourself and uh, you know keeping the right company you also have to make yourself better have your own source of income okay no matter how comfortable uh, you are wherever you are you have to be financially independent when i say financially independent you have to be willing to adapt and just grab opportunities business opportunities as they can. i've seen women that say me i can't do this Okay? I, I I can't sell. I can't you know the only thing I can do is work. And the third thing is life can handle you different situations, but whatever comes your way, always know that you have the power to change that situation. Not the next person, not anybody else, but you have the power to change that situation. It's all up to you. Can I go for either? <laughs> no. Yeah, Five, sure, is en- <laughs> Five is enough. Don't just give up on yourself. It's always about you. Don't give up on yourself. Thank you, Mr. Kanji. Thank you too. It was a good conversation. I've I've learned a lot from you. I think I see you in a different light now. You're not just a social what do you call it, a socialite. Just, you know, bagging big likes and big numbers on social media. There's actually a lot that uh, you can teach people. I look forward to seeing you as a speaker on some poster somewhere. I do some <laughs> I, I do speak sometimes. And um I'm really grateful that uh, Dr. Siatombo gave me a platform too. Uh I have been talking to a few people from the background, but last week was just a wow for me because you know I I I was at the I was at the rehab and uh, for the first time I was able to just share my story without being judged. I was able to share my story to people that, you know, were getting points were people that I I I I encouraged people I, and I felt really good about myself 
just doing the right thing. That should have been on Friday, right? Yes. Yes, because I was with him, he told me, let me just go and introduce me to Kanji, I'll come back in the morning. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. yeah the one who stole him from me. Yeah, so. <laughs> because yeah, he was supposed was... to be there, and then he said, no, I'm going to, I'm going to Sui. So I was like, yeah. So um, I'm really grateful for people that are seeing uh, a better person uh, of me that I'm not. I, I didn't really believe that I was going to be a speaker at some point that I'll be able to sit down and just speak. But I'm really thankful to people that have seen that side of me. And um, I'm really grateful for the opportunities that have just been handed to me. Yeah, and there are more coming. Yes. There are more coming. There are more pending. Oh, wait, thank you very much for, <laughs> for the conversation. Yeah. Thank you so yeah, much. I've, 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 I think I've learned a lot. Your top five makes sense even for me, though I'm not a woman, but it still makes sense, it's still relevant. Um, and it's something obviously to, to reflect on. And I hope that whoever is watching this obviously now sees a different Muzu Kanji in terms of, we feel like we know you, we feel like we, mm -hmm. your struggle is, you know, resonates with who, you know, we are generally. The difference I think with most people is you go through all these struggles and you feel like you can do it on your own, mm -hmm. you know, because that's how I feel like now the support system actually is important very, because no matter very, how strong you are yeah. there's just some things that you just need to hear a different perspective mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like just need a different voice and i also relate with you when you say surrounding yourself with the right people because there are some people you go to them with a the business it can't mm. work no. to them it's yeah. just not ah if yeah we if but if yes one dance you know just go and save yeah. your money you know mm. don't to take an nice high risk all right that's all for you today lovely viewers if you did enjoy the video please don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section below Tell me what you think about the video you just watched in the comment section below. I'll be super glad to hear from you lovely viewers. Once again, I go by the name of Mutatim Pondum. I love you. Peace. I gotta go.